Right, I'm doing a bit of a, an outdoor broadcast at the moment. I've got my road um, wires go on. Little video light, I'll show you this in a minute. And tonight I'm setting my telescope up. This is a Celestron Nexstar 127SLT. Uh, I'm going to be using this in conjunction with a ZWO um, Astrocam. And I've also got a Wi Fi module plugged into it. Uh, because Venus should be up here shortly obviously we've got the meteorite shower tonight and then after three o'clock in the morning I have got well we have got uh, Mars Jupiter and Saturn so tonight I'm going to attempt to do a bit of a astronomical um, extravaganza as it were so we're gonna do a bit of a review on the telescope first of all and then we're gonna get set up um, I haven't used it in ages and then see if we can get some um, images of Venus and then obviously I'll do the other ones in the morning and then this is the telescope so I've been into astronomy for years this is um, it's got a built-in GPS system this can actually track objects across the sky that's what the handset's for so that you can program it in but also, I've got one of these nift little nifty Wi-Fi modules. I'll show you that in a bit. That will connect to my... Uh, you can use your phone or your tablet. And then once you've keyed your coordinates in, either via this or your tablet, you can then tell it what you want to point it to in the sky and it'll point to it. It's more... It's not a bog-standard uh, Nextar 127. Um, I've fitted a remote motor drive to it so that I can actually focus from within the house because my, uh, my computer is in there. Obviously, it's got a motor drive. I'm just going to be using a 25mm lens to line it up. Um, I've got a 50mm finder scope on it. And then these are quite... These are probably one of the best um, planetary scopes that you can use because they're really nifty. When you actually look in there, you can see a mirror and a mirror down there. Now what it does, the longer the length, the longer the focal length of the scope, the better magnification that you've got for doing planetary work. So that looks quite a short scope. So if I put my hand against that, you think, oh, focal length of that's tiny. But because it, the light comes in, obviously here at the front, goes in, bounces down to the bottom, goes up to the secondary mirror, bounces down again, the actual focal length is 1500 millimeters. So it's a meter and a half in length. Diameter, the amount of light that you gather, the focal length for the magnification. So if you've got a 25 mil eyepiece in, it's the 1500 divided by 25, which gives you your magnification. Um, I have managed to get some stunning images using this basic setup of Jupiter. I've got some reasonable ones of Mars, rings of Saturn, for a relatively inexpensive scope, it is a cracking piece of kit. And I have not taken it out of its living room, the shed, for, I'm ashamed to say, over a year. So, we're going to be kicking this in in a bit, as soon as, oh, we've got something up there already. Right, so the camera that I'm going to be using tonight is made by a company called ZWO. And this is the one. This is an AS1224MC. It's a USB 3 camera, looks a bit like a webcam. It's colour. Some people f prefer to use mono, especially for the moon. Uh, and basically, if I can do this, and I've got one handed, don't want to drop it. Basically, it's a webcam, but without optics on it. So if we can look inside there it's got a chip there you go and that chip is what gathers the light and basically what we're going to do we're going to take say a thousand images of venus running it through some software which i'll show you on the computer later and then the software basically 
omits all the ones that are out of focus, wobbly, um, so forth, and it stacks all the good pictures one on top of the other, which then means that through this and basically a very small amateur telescope in the back garden, I can get images that you couldn't see if you just looked through the telescope with the naked eye. Right, so this is going to be my setup for tonight. Got my computer, which I normally do my editing for my YouTube videos and my photography on. Uh, I have got my Samsung Tab S6, and that is going to be connected, as I mentioned to you, through this little dongle, which goes into the telescope. So when I've got a few more stars out, um, I'm going to do what's called an auto align. Not always the easiest thing in the world. Um, then, using software on here, telescope, I've run a cable from my USB 3 hub out, and it goes out of window, just up there. I'm also going to be running a remote focusing uh, controller, so that whatever the camera points to on the telescope, I can see it in the software here, which is software called Sharp Cap. Um, I'm going to be controlling the telescope from my Tab S6, and I'm running um, some software on here so that I can actually just tap on um, a particular star that I want the telescope to move to, and it will go to it, in theory. It doesn't always work when you align it. So, uh, yeah, it may be blue later, but I won't film that. When I've actually got it locked on to, say, Venus, which is hopefully going to be the first thing that I'm going to be imaging tonight, the Sharp Cap software, that's what I'm going to be using initially. Um, I have plugged the Wi-Fi dongle into the telescope. Um, I have then connected my tablet to um, the Wi-Fi signal coming off the dongle, gone onto the software, and then it's asking me here to align. And I've got to align the telescope outside using three objects in the sky. So they can either be planets, the moon, or stars. Obviously, normally, because stars move around slower, you don't want to be using the moon. Um, it takes a while, but all being well, it should connect. And the beauty of doing it this way, instead of using the control of the handset on the telescope, I don't have to worry about making sure that the time is set correctly. My location, because it's got the location from the GPS built into my tablet. So um, it is a lot easier to use. And then all being well, it should be up and running. Right, so software is connected. The telescope is um, aligned. And then I've got my little remote focusing device here and then this is the screen on here I can alter the exposure settings um, the amount of light that's coming into the telescope through the camera you can just see some very faint stars drifting probably across the screen and that's basically noise sensor noise static they are better if you have a cooled um, sensor, but they are extremely expensive. The one that I'm using is probably about £250 now. Uh, it was about 350 when I bought it. But I'm having problems locking on to Venus at the moment. As I alter the gain, that is a star. <clears throat> Sometimes it'll overpower the software as well. Slow that down a bit. We can alter the brightness. And then up here, once we've got a, a particular object that we want to observe we can click on capture and start capture and then it captures the frames which is then when we do the um, image binning later on to get the best frames out of it but I don't want to capture that because it's a very poor image 
Right, so as I showed you earlier, that's the camera connected onto the telescope. Cable coming off and going through the window into the house. This is the cable off the motor drive, the um, focusing drive going off into the house. It does have a handset, but I've disconnected that because of the Wi-Fi that's there at the moment. Um, and then on the actual app, if I show you this, what you can do, <coughs> if we go to scope, if you can see that, we can choose something, tap on it, click go to, and then by magic, as you can see, the telescope swings around to the object that uh, you've chosen. Um, to give you an idea, this is the kind of thing that the, um, I can image with the camera. Um, these are stacked images, starting with the moon. That's an image I took. Um, I've done some sharpening of the image, but as you can see, really good with the craters. Some cracking um, definition. You can see the ejector material coming out of the actual impact craters. You can see craters within craters. Obviously the Maria, the mountain range. Um, so yeah, some really good detail. Uh, another one of the moon. There you go again. Looking down into the shadow, bottom corner of the moon. Some really good you can see some of the central peaks within the craters, which is not bad at all, I don't think. Um, Mars is difficult to image. That, if we blow it up a bit, is Mars. But, if you can actually see it, you can actually see there was a quite a big dust storm at the time when I imaged Mars. Uh, and you can also see the light a bit, that's one of the Martian poles. So that's actually ice on the pole of Mars. And I took that with that telescope that's outside now, which I was really chuffed about. And then obviously the king of the solar system, Jupiter. See the cloud banding. Um, it's difficult to get a lot of detail. It's not an absolutely amazing telescope, but again, that's been taken, that's two of the moons of Jupiter, not sure which. And then last but not least, the most recent one that I took of Jupiter. And on this one, you can see the red spot. And as I took, there's one of the moons of Jupiter as well in the corner. As I took numerous images, you could actually see the rotational period of the planet because obviously for such a huge planet it rotates so fast and you could see the red spot going across the surface. Now that's not what I see with my eye in the telescope, that's what I can capture and then obviously zoom it in for that level of detail from my telescope in my back garden. So it ain't Hubble but for me I'm really chuffed with the results. Right, just to give you an insight on the actual telescope that we were using outside, as I said, it's a Celestron Nexstar 127 SLT telescope. It's currently for sale on Rother Valley Optics Limited for £489. So it's not a cheap scope, but in the grand scheme of things, it is a cheap scope. You can pay a lot more than that. It is actually technically a discontinued telescope now. Affordable entry to mid-level computerized go-to telescope. Um, it has 127mm Mac Sutov Cassegrain. That's how it actually bends the light in the actual um, optical tube assembly of the telescope. Um, it normally comes with a red dot finder scope. It's a red dot on a little screen. I've replaced that with the 50mm finder scope that you've seen on there now. Um, quick release mounts on it. Um, it's got a database built in of 4,000 celestial objects. So quite a lot. It is 8.16 kilograms in weight, so not really heavy. You can 
put it in your car and take it off it can run on eight AA batteries but they'll go like that that's why I've got mine plugged through an adapter to the mains uh, focal length as said to you was 1500 mil focal ratio is 11.8 um, maximum magnification theoretically is 167 times but it's not always about the magnification a lot of the times it's about the light gathering power of the scope that you're using uh, let's have a look it will as I said to you at the start of the video about magnitudes the low if it's a minus magnitude the object you're looking at is very bright um, when we go to plus that's things that you can't see with the naked eye now because it's really good at imaging planets it doesn't actually have as much light gathering power as say a refractor telescope which is basically a lens at the front and a lens at the back but it will go down to magnitude 13 which is lower than the human eye can see so it gathers a lot more light than the human eye does obviously because um, the objective lens the mirror is that much bigger right i'm keeping quiet because people are in bed i've come out into the garden to um observe the meteorite shower so i'm just going to sit here with the lights off and watch kill some time and wait until the planets are up in the early hours of the morning because uh, next door might have the bedroom window open. I don't want to disturb anybody because they've got work tomorrow. So I'll uh, catch you in a bit. Happy days. Right, so hopefully you found the video informative. Obviously, I didn't uh, stay up until stupid o'clock. I actually hit the sack about four o'clock. I waited up for Jupiter and then I gave up in the end because it wasn't going to get up. Uh, above the houses enough it was uh, southeast from where I was but hopefully it's giving you an insight into uh, astrophotography uh, one of my hobbies hopefully you found it interesting if you did enjoy the video please give me a thumbs up that'd be great uh, and as always until next time please stay safe cheers bye